There are different types of fire trucks. Pumpers hook up to fire hydrants, boost the pressure, then shoot the water out through hoses. Ladder trucks elevate firefighters on either a ladder or a platform. Rescue trucks have tools to cut through metal and clear obstructions. <laughs> Early firefighters couldn't do much more than pass buckets of water from man to man. The 1720s saw the arrival of wagons carrying water tanks and hand pumps. Those newfangled pumps could spew out an impressive 60 gallons of water per minute, about what you get from two garden hoses. The first horse-drawn fire trucks with steam-powered pumps went into service in 1852. Gas-powered trucks replaced them in the early 1900s. This pumper truck can deliver 6,000 liters of water per minute. Mechanical engineers usually custom-design fire trucks to suit the particular needs of the fire department placing the order. The truck's body is made entirely from 4 millimeter thick sheets of marine-grade aluminum. Following the technical drawings, workers cut the aluminum panels to the sizes required, notching certain corners at a 90-degree angle. Workers weld the pieces together to form what's known as the crew cab. The crew cab not only carries the firefighters, it also houses the control panel for the water system. Meanwhile, other workers measure and then cut pieces of aluminum to build the subframe that will support the crew cab from underneath. They weld the parts together. Installing the steps, workers leave a gap of about a centimeter and a half to enable water to drain down. They line the storage compartments with aluminum sheets, using a sander to make textured circles on the smooth surface. This pattern will camouflage the scratches that moving equipment in and out will inevitably create. They use a machine called a press brake to bend the sheets to the required shape. Then, using what's known as a punch press, they cut holes for the built-in lights, the door handles, and the various control knobs. Workers now assemble the pieces and make any necessary adjustments before painting rather than after to avoid damaging the finish. After this fine-tuning, they'll disassemble everything and send the parts to the paint department. After that, they'll put it all carefully back together. The full-scale assembly can now begin, starting with the water pump. It arrives here ready-made from the supplier. Next comes the crew cab. This one isn't for the pumper, but rather for a yellow rescue vehicle. The pipes that lead to and from the water pump go into a threading machine. The pipes are part galvanized steel, part stainless steel. Once they're threaded, they're ready to be screwed into the pump's water outlets. The drive shaft, that long piece coming from the transmission, doesn't just perform its usual job of turning the rear axle when the truck is in motion, it also powers the water pump when the truck is parked fighting a fire. This control box runs the fire truck's electrical system, including the flashing emergency lights. Each wire is color-coded, number-coded, and function-coded. Workers run the wires from the box to the control panel in the crew cab.
Then they hook up the odometer, speedometer, and other dashboard indicators. They install water pressure gauges, adapters for connecting the hoses to the water system, and pressure release valves for adjusting water pressure. Lo and behold, a shiny new fire truck built to a department's exact specifications. Only there's one thing the client didn't have to specify, that it be painted fire engine red.